everyone. I am so glad to be doing this series all about six stars tips on how to get you to the finish line, get the medal, get the star, and hopefully see you on the board like myself for other six star finishers. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. The big question that everyone has asked me, Alex, you're a six star, you've ran Boston, three times <laughs> you're a six hour marathoner how did you do it can you offer tips about boston and running this race to finish it right. so one thing i have to say you have to know the time limit cutoffs of every single major marathon you just have to and boston is a little bit different than any of the other ones the reason being i actually like it is because it's technically a set time but it's not the main thing you want to know is that the course closes at 5 30 p.m eastern time so that is your focus and goal no matter what on this race okay it doesn't matter when you start but you need to cross that finish line by 5 30 okay that that's it that's your goal 5 30 p.m no matter what so if you're a garmin shuts down or whatever i was asking people what time was it on the course you gotta know that that is how i missed the cut off time by two minutes in 2022 because i was not aware of the actual time that the course shut down and i just i was off by a few minutes so take that lesson from me no 5 30. Now, the official thing about Boston and what they say, the wording is very different and most people do not like it. They state it is six hours from the start of the time of the last person that starts or crosses the starting line. Now, mind you, there are thousands and thousands of people that are running the race in in particular your jam-packed kind of in wave four now there is an official person that starts and they normally start about at 11 30 hence the 5 30 shut time six hours 11 30 there you go it typically takes about 15 minutes between each wave from wave one two three and four give or take somewhere in there um, so by the time that that person starts should be 1130. Now, the reason why it's worded that way for Boston is because Boston does Boston things. They know that stuff happens in a race that they might have to adjust. Okay. So they're keeping that in mind. Case in point, 2018, when I had my first and only DNF at this point in time, what happened was that, um, they extended the time for that cross because it was a mess. You can Google 2018 Boston. It is one for the books. It is insane. Um, and so that time the course did not shut down until I want to say around six something. It might've been later, but you guys can look that up or whatever. That's that flexibility that they make adjustments. Um, if the buses don't make it up there on time, they extend the course to maybe adjust or whatever. They have that flexibility on it. That official last person might start at a different time or might not have gotten on the bus because of the bus situation. That actually did happen. So that's where that flexibility comes from. But at the end of the day, you guys need to know what time it should now. So it's 530, not 530. In 30 seconds, not 5.30 and 15 seconds, 59 seconds. You need to be crossing no later than 5.29 <laughs> and, you know, 59 seconds, okay? So that's just it. They're, they're around that point. That is your, your, your guide on that. That's the big. People want to be up in the waves or anything like that I'm not gonna discuss that in this one because none of that stuff really matters the biggest things and adjustments that I've made through being there three times and going through this is first studying 
I know that course in my sleep. When I was injured in 2022 and two months before, I really had to study where were was the exact first A stations? Where were the, not just the Martin Joes, but where did I, I knew exactly where they gave out the salt tablets. I knew exactly where the restrooms, the porter stops. Like I know exactly to this date what every single thing is on that course. And that's important because when you're in a race like 2018 and you don't, you can't really see, I couldn't see in front of me. Knowing where I was in the mile means, oh yeah, I know that the Martin jails are coming up or there's an aid station. There's a, uh, you know, a 7-Eleven or, you know, whatever place if I need to go in or something and get like, there are stops that I know that are important along the way. Now that you've studied the course and know it, it's actually training for the course. Um, what I did was actually work with my amazing coach um, and both all the times that I've ran and gone out there, I've had four to five miles where I was running hills and I looked at the elevation and found hills that mimic elevation wise, not just two Boston hills because there's, you know, heart, it's not heartbreak the the heels really start at 15 to 16. I looked at that and I actually mimic going up and down consistently for four to five miles back and forth on higher heels. And the reason why was because I conditioned myself mentally and physically to know my body is needs to know how this elevation feels, but more than that. So when I get to Boston, I don't get eaten up by the hills because I've only ran what they, only to the points of them. I ran more so that Boston hills feel easy to me. So when my body's tired, it's not, I'm not so exhausted in a sense. Does that make sense? So yeah. I actually built that in. It's not just for the long runs in the hills. We're talking easy runs. I had hills in there. I was doing this for months. So your third tip is definitely now training for the race. So we've got train for the course, which should be that, and train for the race. Uh, this is a bit different. One of the tips that I got a while ago was to actually just start my Garmin on my long runs and don't stop it for water stops or anything, keeping it going. The reason being is because when you're in the race, you don't, there's no pause on a Garmin, there's no pause on the time. But oftentimes in the training runs, we will stop and take a minute or two in water, and actually that might be five minutes, and then we'll stop and have a porta potty break. We'll stop again, refill at our car. And when you look at that time, that can be extensive of 30 to 40 extra minutes that you put on what you thought was a three hour or four hour, you know, run that you did. So you, when you go to the race, it's like, hey, well, I trained for a six hour. Well, actually you trained for a six hour and 30 minute because you actually stopped more. You went here, you had porta potties, all of those things that added on the time. That's a big deal. Like if you, that was easy to me and, and it made me speed up. <laughs> and then I got a better sense of what my average pace was. So I would try to bring my average pace down to about the lower ends of the 12s, if not 11s. I was really working on 11s, y'all. <laughs> um, and that way, when I did my walks or I had a, you know, a water stop or I had, a, you know, a restroom or whatever, it would average out to about 12, 30 or 13 minutes because of, oh, I slowed down for 30 seconds walk through that walk break and I wasn't stressed about it because I'm actually running at a 
faster speed, but taking in those extra times that's needed. The next two things are very, very simple. Um, it's an option, but I would say experience it. Boston has tons of other races outside of just the marathon, but the 5K that happens on the race weekend, you can go there, you can also volunteer. There's a bajillion things to do as well. The A that puts on, they have a half, a 10K, 5K, all of that with the medley. Um, I say that to say because going it and experience it before is a fantastic way to ease those jitters the day of that normally happen and come about, but oftentimes we get lost in that. Don't worry, I mean, every Boston Marathon is different. So <laughs> you can go for one race and still have the same, you know, excitement as when you run the race, trust me. Um, but I think it's really good to kind of help and, and get your mind there and see, oh, this is the finish. Oh, there is where is my hotel. Okay, this is where Hopkins is. Okay, this is where, you know, to see all of that. And, and then the last thing is <laughs> when you get there, do not, and I repeat, do not, do not alter really anything. Stick to your plan. Make sure you are up in front front in the corral you're not waiting around in the restrooms all of that because that's where you can eat up a lot of time and where people are in the beginning of the corrals and you end up being the start in the back of your corral or let alone at the back of the wave there you know empty your bladder if you have to um like most people when they get there stick to it get off your feet all of those things and you know be at the front and know what time you're starting so those are my tips uh, following all of those really did help me like push through this final time um beyond than anything else and so yeah <laughs> let me know if you have any other questions if this was helpful um here to really help in you know share the love and joy of boston marathon but also reaching for the six stars